This is Selma Schimmel in Chicago at the annual ASCO meeting for the group room, and we're very happy to sit with you, Dr. Clifford Huddis, Chief of the Breast Cancer Medicine Division at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Hi, Dr. Huddis. Hi. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. What's happening at ASCO 2012 in the area of breast presentations? Well, breast cancer has been an area of tremendous excitement and development over the last 10, 20 years at ASCO with breakthrough after breakthrough, some big, some not as big. Uh, and I think it's been a place where transformative results have been revealed. Uh, this year really isn't any different. Uh, there are a couple of very important presentations at, at, at ASCO this year in breast cancer that I think are worth a couple minutes attention. The key one, and presented at the plenary session by Kim Blackwell, was the result of a randomized phase three trial in which a conventional therapy capecitabine and lipatinib, known as Ticurb, uh, and capecitabine is known as Zolota, uh, was compared to a novel therapy. And in this case, I'll start by pointing out that the novel therapy was even better. But what's really exciting about it was the nature of the novel therapy. So this was in HER2-positive breast cancer. These were patients whose cancer had gotten worse with therapy before using the standard drug Herceptin, also known as Trastuzumab. And so this was a setting where capecitabine and lipatinib had already been approved as standard therapy. The new drug called TDM1 is T for trastuzumab, that's the Herceptin, and DM1 is a construct. It's a linker molecule and a chemotherapy drug, and together they call them uh, emtansine. And this is an antimicrotubule drug, which means, in lay terms, it's a drug that attaches to a structure inside of cells called tubulin. In that regard, in the most general way, it shares some properties with old drugs like the vinca alkaloids, vinblastine, and so forth, and in a very uh, tangential way with newer drugs like the taxanes, paclitaxel, docetaxel. But what's outright cool about this is that the antibody, trastuzumab, brings the chemotherapy to the cell. It attaches to the cell. It is internalized within the cell. And then inside a structure called the lysosome, the, this combination of chemotherapy and linker molecule is removed from the antibody and circulates within the cell to kill it. So this is the Buck Rogers dream that many of us had 30 years ago about what modern cancer medicine would look like. In fact, the discussant referred back to really the beginning of, of microbiology, the modern microbiology, and talked about the idea from Paul Ehrlich in the early days of antibiotics of the targeted poison for bacteria. But here, it's cancer. So what happened? Exactly and really precisely what you would hope. It was more effective than standard therapy, and it was markedly less toxic. It may even have uh, led to a prolongation in overall survival for these patients who were really quite sick with advanced cancer. And the only reason I say it so cautiously is that to the outside observer, it improved survival. But they set a very strict threshold for being absolutely certain statistically that overall survival was improved, and they fell just a bit short of it. Interestingly, the presenter, Kim Blackwell, was conservative in the same vein that I just was, but the discussant went a little further and simply labeled it a survival advantage. Uh, this is important because, A, anything that prolongs life always represents a big advance, but it predicts that this may represent a sizable step forward when we test it in earlier stages of breast cancer. So I think that's the big deal, the technology and the practical advance coupled with reduced toxicity. How is it delivered? It's an intravenous treatment. I'm sorry that I didn't say that. So in, it's given the way that the standard drug trastuzumab Herceptin is given. Nothing different about it. That's really exciting, especially for women who have a disease that they believe is a little more threatening than other forms of breast cancer. Well, and one thing to point out is this is chemotherapy. Make no mistake about it. But this is a chemotherapy drug that given intravenously was always too toxic to even develop. What this does is target it, focus its delivery. So is it perfect? No. 
Does, but it's exciting. Does that mean that systemic, what, what does happen systemically when it is going to a particular target? Mm -hmm. What goes on in the rest of the body? Well, that's a great question because you could assume maybe nothing or you could assume there might be some low-level toxicities because it leaks out. Mm -hmm. And I think the true answer is somewhere in between. So this is a drug that should have almost no toxicity, but in fact it has some. In particular, some people have abnormalities of their liver function tests, and some people have had other abnormalities, including in the past uh, ocular uh, toxicities or um, uh, GI and so forth. And some people have had some transient um, uh, low platelet counts from this that seem to recover. So that's evidence that this drug, while delivered at first pass, perhaps, to the tumor, is leaking a little bit but it's tolerable. This exists because people were willing to let that coin flip happen, and they were assigned arm A, TDM, or arm B, capecitabine lapatinib, and that's a brave thing to do always. It is one of those areas of easy misunderstanding that we're often dealing with in terms of the public. Randomization is critical for eliminating bias and really establishing differences between treatment. Thank you. Dr. Clifford Hedis, Chief Breast Cancer Medicine, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, and President-elect 2014. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.